Does the news today make you wanna hurl? And when you flash out poop, do you watch it swirl? It should be easier than trying to spell squirrel. It's Cory and Nina against the world. Hello, hello. This is Evangelist. I can't believe it's actually happening. We've got our COVID vaccine stickers on. It's about to be a Association, every one of you out there. It's so exciting to be in real time with you again. I can't believe it. We're not gonna do this ding dong COVID Zoom thing anymore. We're gonna have a studio. That would be a dream. I want a fart. Whoa, really? Beers. That really is, in essence, why we did this podcast. It's buffoonery at the utmost. It's stupid. And it's provided an escape from the woes of the real world. Come on, you just wanna have a good time. I also wanna make sure that we are like, oh, wait, to what's going on? <laughs> it's crazy. So we developed a brilliant digital device that we call the Fart Computer. And this is what we use to like gauge the severity of these world issues. They range from. It's like a. It's like innocent. nobody noticed it. Yeah, it's silent. It's not even deadly. It's just like, oh, you just like had to let a little bit like gas. It didn't affect it. nobody. It didn't affect nobody. It gets a little bit more crazy. It goes up to the shark. You pooped your pants, you gotta go home. It's very in-depth. So we've talked about like a lot of like world instances and like we measured them on this sophisticated digital device we know as the Fardo Meter. Something that I want to bring up, which I want Corey to judge on the okay. Fardo Meter, is there are a lot of people out in the world coming out with America's Next Top Model podcast. <laughs> that's true. Who have not been a part of America's Next Top Model. <laughs> and that's not throwing shade. I just want to know why people don't want to hear it from us directly. If you want to know the truth of the situation, just ask us. We're here. That actually is a really good point. Um, what is that called? So, Shay Coule of RuPaul's Drag Race, it was just released through Entertainment Weekly that she's going to be running an America's Next Top Model podcast. She's going to give commentary on all of the things that happen on America's Next Top Model. We've seen this happen before with other people like Oliver Twist, our good friend. And the one who does the hairdressing commentary? Yeah, uh, I like to remember Brad Mondo. Brad Mondo? Yeah, and it's like people love getting the tea from gossip-centric people who want to give perspective. And it's not to throw shade at Shay. I think Shay is like so dope. And I'm, I'm actually excited, but I'm really hoping that Shay is kind and nice about what she puts out concerning the show. <laughs> and I hope that she's nice to Tyra. I think Tyra has been enduring a lot of like negative. Stress. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know if we need more of that, if that needs to be exacerbated or if it's time to maybe like move on and realize that there is humanity in all of us and we are flawed and we make mistakes. I think it could go either way, right? Um, but in any event, Oliver Twix, Shea Coule, Brad Mondo, all these people like doing these really popular top model commentaries, I would rate that as like, for me, it's like a two. It made a little bit of noise. Two, two, like, make a noise. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't hurt me. Like, I'm not offended. These I will people, watch all their shows. I have like, I'm going to watch. I love Shea Coule. I love RuPaul's Drag Race. I also oh, love, I love the idea that like these worlds are merging. Because like, I'm a RuPaul's Drag Race fan. And obviously, I'm a fan of top models. So seeing those two worlds collide in that way is going to be cool. I would love to see Tyra Banks as a guest on RuPaul's Drag Race. Can we have uh, Tyra that, Banks as a guest on yeah, Brave New York? Tyra, we have some ideas, please. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she's gonna do that after you said that her weave stinks on out of her Twitter. <laughs>
why did I do that? Like, why did I say there that? There are some like, interviews why? out there that make you feel so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's like extorting drama in a way. Talk to me about the context of how that was said, because a lot of people saw it. And I said some stuff about Tom Hanks too, so I'll give you mine if you give me yours. I'll show you mine, you show me yours. Like, how did that even I think come out of your mouth and why? Honestly, Oliver had asked me about Tyra's wigs. Okay. Because he said that they were janky <gasps> on our season. That's what he said. So already extorting. Already, 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 already there. And then I said, oh, I have a funny story. My first mother agent was actually Tyra Banks' agent back in the day. Okay. And then I was like, oh, I actually have a funny story. According to the wigs, my agent said this about her. So it wasn't you. It wasn't me. But do you see how that can happen? Oliver started asking me really uncomfortable questions. Everyone who interviews me about Tom Mala is like, let's the tea with you and Rob Evans. It was super uncomfortable. Like, da, da, da. And honestly, I didn't feel any animosity during that time towards Rob. I look at Rob as like a straight guy. Like he maybe is not cultured in the way that like a lot of people expect people to be. Um, also keep in mind this show aired eight years ago, and I felt like I needed to clear the air about Rob Evans, and so I took it upon myself to spill some real tea and truth about mm -hmm. Johnny Wujek and, oh, and yes. Brian Boy, oh, because yes. Brian Boy was actually actively, like, doing shady things and saying shady things about me. That a bully. Absolutely, and everyone was, like, jumping down Rob's throat. Today, he oh. is really making an effort to... He's reformed. Apologize. He's reformed. Yes. He's a reformed Bob Evans. He's a reformed individual. Yeah. Still at a sexy, still at a <laughs> sex day. <laughs> He's sex day. <laughs> he just didn't want to have sex with me, that's all. Okay, so the way that that was worded makes it sound like you wanted to have sex with him. I do. Okay, cool. I get it. This lovely space that we're in is a gallery opening called Diamond Razors and Champagne. Yeah. It is about this craziness in the world, the drunken buffoonery. That is- Hedonism is like the fancy artsy word that our uh, curator, the person who put this gallery together used. Yes, yes. And so, you know, there's art ranging from the 18th century all the way up to this digital age that we're in. And I just like how it is just, involved this mess yeah. and we are going to be speaking to the curator and the artist himself we are with the curator Ooh. the creative behind the art gallery pop up in soho it's out now it's called diamonds razors and champagne his name's lee the show is about hedonism and bacchus and the nature of Joy all throughout history. I love that. So and funny. a big source of joy is life. Getting, getting fucked up. Obliterated. <laughs> I mean, it's a Tuesday or whatever time it is. It's Sunday. It's Sunday, actually. But that's all right. Time. time is a socially constructed <laughs> idea. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. When I first walked through here and saw everything, I immediately felt like it was grungy, a bit punk, but there's some cool Victorian nods and there's also a lot of Greek mythology. And then you see references to pop culture as well. And it's all cohesive through the eras of how partying, hedonism, or what have you, like really influences our culture. Yeah. I try to bring things from the then and the now and tie everything together as history has gone. From literally things that have been made in the past and then I had reproductions made that artists painted on in the now. It's beautiful. He has a, a, a full screening of drunken TikToks. I don't know whose mom needs to hear this, but your daughter is an alcoholic. She's not doing the worst she could, but she's also not doing the best. It's absolutely brilliant and screw you. Thank you. Wait, so y'all know each other. <laughs> I, 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 like, like, we're friends, so yeah. she can be a bitch. I was just saying, like, <laughs> I don't know you that way. I want to say screw you. I want to curse at you. But you I'm can. Like, famous last words. We <laughs> have come up 
as you know, with this very sophisticated device called the fartometer. There are seven questions. It's different scales of farts, but we have made it a drinking game. Uh, thank you. We're going to start off with the first question. So this is a puff. It's a puff. Tell people what puff's all about. It ain't no thing but a puff. It's just a little bit of air that seeped on up. Y'all all know what I'm talking about. You're going to be okay, baby. You're going to be okay. Mm. When did you know you were an artist? As a child? I just drew and drew and drew and art and made and made and made, and then it evolved into like curate and curate and curate and make and all of it. It's just about being crazy. Like, you don't get a choice. You don't get a choice. I know for myself, like, I always was struggling with, like, am I an artist? Yes, yeah. models are artists. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There was this one point where I was at FIT and I was going to painting and drawing classes because I just didn't know how to showcase my work. I had yeah. no idea. Totally. It's just the state of the way the world works right now, you have to do everything as an artist. You're your own publicist, your own curator. I fixed my walls, I did everything. Just try to learn as many skills as you can and really develop in a multifaceted way because there's no fucking other option. And you gotta take charge and it all has to come from you. You just have to want to do it. Okay, so this one is a... Uh... Two. It's a two. When did you know you were gay? <laughs> I think I had my first sexual experience at like nine, and I knew that. I knew what I wanted around nine. Obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, listen, <laughs> it's your truth. And I think the fact that you shared that, I think is really, I think more truthful than a lot of people are willing to go. Like, you're like, oh yeah, duh, it's nine. Yeah, it was nine. Yeah, I didn't get a choice. Yeah. I didn't get a choice. <laughs> you don't pick this shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we promised to make this a drinking game. We're two questions deep and we have not taken our shots. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I need one. Cheers to you, Lee. Cheers to you guys. I love you. Cheers for being a girl. We love you. Too. Love you. Um, I think we're it. It's a quick week. You know her. I don't love tequila. I'm more of a bourbon boy, but it's fine. Okay. It's a Midwestern thing. I was going to say, you strike me as a bourbon person. It's oh not a beer. Oh my god, it's fine. So this is the... Boot! There's some stank. There's some stank, unfortunately. <laughs> and I think there is some stank in this question, too, because I think sure. it's a first world issue. I'm actually, like, super um, intrigued by how Britney Spears comes up in a lot of your art. Um, I don't know if y'all can see in that mirror, right. there's like a Britney Spears cutout. Also in the storefront window, there's a missing sign that shows Britney Spears' oh. face. Britney Spears is obviously a pop culture icon who has yes. been very much in the media as of late, unfortunately because of the whole conservatorship thing and hashtag free Britney has gone trending, gone viral. This woman doesn't have agency over her own life as it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And what's your commentary on that and why does that play such a big part in your art? Well, I love Britney Spears. Full stop. She became the icon for some of the posters because I put up missing posters of a bunch of celebrities. They're amazing. Yeah. People love them. This is a shot, so we have to. Oh, sorry. Oh, we're drinking. Oh, yes. Each oh. question is a shot. This one's good. You have the frosting. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's tequila. Wow. That was intense. I want to know more about the weird infrastructure behind America's Next Top Model. Like, how much were you guys Why, why are you living? I don't know. Uh, okay. Is there a rule? No, there's no rules, okay. I guess. What do you want to know specifically? We have a question. Oh, we have a question. Saved by the bell. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Lee. We have a question. So we're going to take this question. This person said, can I please see Corey in short? What the fuck? Just Sorry. take off your hands. Just take off your hands. <laughs> I'd rather answer Lee's question. I will answer your question if you will answer my question. Sure. If you were ever proposed a reality television show, because we really are in the day and age of the reality TV show, would you do it? I applied for some of them. No. And I did auditions. I went to the Brooklyn Museum, and they were doing a call for artists to do like 
America's Next Top Artist. Really? Thing. I can't remember the, na- the name of the I didn't <laughs> watch the show. Artist. That's it was, cool. But I went to the Brooklyn Museum. That's cool. I showed them my portfolio, and this was like 2008 or something like that. Yeah. And I went and like showed up, but like I guess I didn't meet their curve. That's disrespectful. I'm scared. Disrespectful. And they were wrong. How did you actually get all in top model? Yeah, how did you apply? Me. I was a waiter at the time, and I was supposed to show up to my first day of work and decided instead to go to the open call for America's Next Top Model. Wow. <laughs> Very responsible Cute. of me. Yeah. And I was like in a stressful situation financially, so <laughs> it took like a lot for me to do that. And I went to a cattle call. So there's like thousands upon thousands of people. It was a 12 hour day, and I remember standing in line for 12 hours just to get 10 minutes in front of a camera to tell my story, and then they gave us a, a chance to give a fun. Where were you? Were you in Philly? I was in New York. Well, I lived in Philly, but I took the mega bus up to New York. Well, guess what? Phil Sullivan, who was on the top model, Phil. Phil! He was the person right behind me that entire day. So I. Joke. Yes, like I got to know Phil better that day than I did during any day of filming Top Model. I'm a Virgo and I'm very like in my head. Of, like when I need to do something, I'm like, I need to be perfect. And he was like, Phil. are you feeling like it's raining yet? Yeah, 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 he was like, are you feeling this? Oh, dude, it's gonna be sick. We're gonna be on TV. I lived in New York. Corey lived in Philly. I auditioned at an open call in Philadelphia. <laughs> Why did I do that? We, we. I like submitted photos online. I did an open call in Philly, and I don't know what they saw. Something. Uh, here's and Queen. somebody called me, and they were like, "Will you come to the open call in Los Angeles?" Did you like, pay for me to get there? Maybe? No, they didn't pay for me to get there, and I was like, "Oh, oh no. I guess so." You went to LA. Mm-hmm. Oh, you had a part of it then. I didn't mm-hmm. do that. They I made me work for it. it I wouldn't really have made annoying. it on top model. That's super annoying. annoying. It was just, you know. That's representing. They didn't pay That's representing. The you know, they were like, it'll be good exposure. Oh, we should take a shot. I'm hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that can be the, the far you asking us about top model. But now we need to ask you some more questions. Yes. My good friend. Go okay. forward. So this is the fart bomb. It's an explosive, diuretic, is that a word? I don't know. Affair. A diuretic. Of the anus. <laughs> it's a whole thing. And I want to ask you, Lee, I want you to elaborate on a video that I saw of you making play art and like vomiting all over yourself in front of you. Like, what the hell was that? Because it's in the show. Like, he elected to show this to people. I'm like, you. Put a video of you vomiting of you in a bucket all over yourself. What's going on? Like how? Why? What was the artistic statement you were trying to make? The artistic statement I was trying to make <laughs> is not in a statement even. It's just <laughs> it was just a lived experience. It was from graduate school, but like I'm puking on myself. I'm puking on the ceramics. I'm puking on everything. <laughs> so I'm so mind you, if you will, I don't know if any of our viewers <laughs> have seen the like, hot. <laughs> on TikTok that are like, yeah. like doing the pottery they're all like, yeah. and I'm the John Waters version. I love John Waters. You like me in the future, I don't care if you like me now. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. But it's all stuff that's fascinating because this was like, you know, this was when you were in college, you were doing your thing, and now it's all a trend, like it's all subjective, it's so wild. Pollution. Pollution. How do you feel about exposure? I really don't like it. I don't like being here. I'm not doing this because I like it. I'm doing it because I think it's interesting and fascinating. When you say, I am not about exposure as an artist, like, I get your stance in saying, like, oh, like, I would prefer for it to just be, like, the art, right? However, the whole messaging behind everything that you do is all that much more powerful when it is exposed and when people actually receive it. I want to know how your message can get out without that exposure being a very necessary like part of it all. And how do you feel about that? Saying what you yeah, said. No, I, I totally hear you. The notion of being out is not the notion of being represented, not the notion of being important. And like I don't care if people pay attention to me. Like I have to sell a certain amount of work 
to make a living. Yeah. I think it depends on your messaging too, though, because if you want to elevate the consciousness, the, the, the general consciousness through your art, which I think you have the potential to do and what I think you've actually already done. Like, me, myself, coming in here and seeing Britney put up in this way made me really think about that and made me think about her oppression and also societal oppression. Yeah. And I think okay. that that's the power of art, like how it can start that kind of process of thought. It's something that invokes thought and makes people go deeper. That's great. You know what I mean? That needs to be exposed. People need to see that. People need to look at things differently because we're so dense. We're so trapped. There's so, is, so is, much superficiality. Yeah. So much Yeah, and the art maker is the one, is the gatekeeper. The art maker is the gatekeeper. And you can say, look, there's this whole message. This is the message that I'm trying to do. Like and there's the this person idea. in the video, like the person behind the image, the person behind every, like the artist behind the thing, like that is the reality. Yeah, like, yeah. We need to expose yeah. The reality of this is the person behind yes. the reality. So you, this Lee, is how it works. So Lee doesn't need to do it for exposure for Lee. Lee needs to do it for exposure to the idea. To that, try to help teach. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because like, that's education like, is fucked. Don't go to school. I really wish. Even though that I'm you, graduating, like, to I mean, school is like so important. <laughs> like <laughs> educational institutions are fucked. I'm just letting they you know. They are. He has gone to school. So he can't I have he can say that. Right. They are fine. Arguments safe. Arguments safe. safe. I'm still paying my school loans. I don't, I don't think I can. Just got to say. I read the Bible for arguments safe, too. I love what you're doing. It's important. Okay, now we're going to start. Tell me when to stop. 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 Now. That doesn't apply. Oh. <laughs> now. What's that? What's that even saying? I want to hear that one. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to apologize for shit, bitch. Freestyle <laughs> rap for the next 30 seconds. And I went into a scene, and it was all fucking scene. I don't know what I was doing. I was just hanging out with friends. Shit happens. That happens. It is all cool. Shit isn't. It isn't. It then it is. I uh, walked into a room. Here they are. Nina and Corey are fucking it up. So at I'm third and bizarre. At third and bizarre. So I just rolled with the punches and took it as is, and these bitches are just like hauling it in, and that's what you get. I don't know. I made that up. I hope so. Like that was really. I thought that was a song. I don't know. I thought that you were. Singing. Yeah, I work for I work for uh, Pharrell. Um, that was profound. I <laughs> Don't know what I said. <laughs> you said it was one of those. You said something. <laughs> you said there was something seriously <laughs> truthful in there. Something very meaningful. All right, we have to oh, do a fart ball. Or a shark. Sorry, shark. Do you think Nina's drunk? Weigh in. Yeah. What do you think? Oh. Weigh in. Should Nina have another shot? Yeah. My, my yeah. love, like, you are such a treasure. You really oh, are. By the way, we <laughs> painted my shirt. We have a question. <gasps> is it good? Have you gotten to mentor anybody? Oh, that's Neary. such a sweet question. No, yeah. You. Yeah. you have been a mentor to me. Good. It's true because um, Lee and I have known each other because I used to manage a vintage store in the East Village on 12th Street Avenue B. It's called East Village Vintage Collective. And Lee's studio was there. You were the only person that understood my humor. Yeah. 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 We got along and we like we had this weird connection because I was like, everything's a joke. Okay, great. You realize nothing is serious. Okay, great. I love you. You're amazing. And I you love have influenced my fucking life. Does the news today make you wanna hurl? And when you flash out poop, do you watch it swirl? I should be 